Okay, so we're back today with uh, part two, uh, the final part of the Lenovo X1 unboxing. So I've had uh, a little time with the laptop now, um, and I've learned a few things about it that I like, uh, a few things about it I don't like. Uh, but overall, I've been pretty impressed with the laptop. I don't feel like it was a, a bad purchase. Um, there's, there's some things that, uh, that really shine. I, I was really surprised, things that, that I don't normally think about. Uh, that I really liked on it, that really sold it to me. So for the comparison here, I've got my old laptop and a new laptop. Now my old laptop, if you watched my previous video, I said it was maybe a year old. It's actually older than I recalled. Uh, it's a, a Gen 6 Core i7. Um, it was about uh, July 2016 when I bought that laptop. So, so it is uh, quite a bit older than I recalled. And, um, and I'll go into the specs of the old laptop and the new laptop. They're pretty similar, even though it's older, it's an older generation of processor, uh, processor. Um, but uh, uh, they're pretty similar. Um, the first thing I wanna say is the thing that really made me love the Lenovo laptop was the keyboard. And I read online, I've talked to some other people, uh, and a few of the guys that work here, they, they have the Lenovo laptops, and that was one of the things they liked about it. Um, the keyboard uh, has curves on the keys, which is really nice, easy for finger uh, placement on them. Uh, and this is the Lenovo X1 here, if you can't tell through the video. This is a Dell Precision uh, 15, okay? so. The keys on the Precision, uh, nice, they, they have a nice press, They're, they, just, they feel pretty good, but they have no curve on them, they're completely flat. So you can very easily lose your place on the keyboard if you're typing and looking at the screen uh, or, or trying to talk on a phone and, and use your hands, like we do that a lot when we're in a data center and you're on the phone talking to a customer or a third party vendor or something and you're trying to use your computer and be on the phone, it's real easy to get your hands lost uh, on the keyboard and have to kind of get reoriented. Uh, the Dell on the other hand, or the Lenovo on the other hand, the keys have a nice curve to them. They feel really, really good. Um, that was my favorite thing about the laptop. So. Uh, of the two, they're basically the same uh, specification. I'll, I'll read that off. Uh, and I'll put this on the screen as well. The uh, Lenovo has an 8th gen Core i7 8850H 6 core CPU. The Dell Precision, that is from 2016, has a 6th gen Core i7 6820HQ, and it's a 4 core. So newer laptops 6 core, older laptops a 4 core. They both have Windows 10 Pro. Uh, the display on both of them is a 15.6 inch ultra high definition 3840 by 2160 touchscreen. Now I'm sure there's discrepancies there in the details. I didn't go into that. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, it's a touchscreen. It's multi-point touch on both of them, and it was a 4K uh, resolution. So, so that was fine with me. Uh, memory. Uh, the new laptop has 16 gigs of RAM. I only put 8 gig of RAM in my old one, although it holds quite a bit if you really want to upgrade it. Um, I don't really need 16. There was just not a big price break for going less than 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, the graphics on the new laptop has a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti Max Q, and that's four gigabytes of graphics memory. The old laptop was an NVIDIA Quadro M1000M two gigabyte GDDR5. So I couldn't tell you the differences in those. I could go look them up, but you guys will know what the differences are. Uh, the one thing I would say is the Lenovo is probably a better gaming laptop if you want a laptop for work and gaming uh, because it's using the GeForce GTX cards, whereas the uh, Dell that I was using, the Precision, almost all your Precisions are going to have Quadros, which are more CAD video cards uh, than anything. They're really designed for doing computer-aided design and, and accelerating that. On the Lenovo, it's a four-cell lithium polymer 80-watt hour battery. On the Dell, it's a three cell lithium ion 56 watt hour battery. So there's a major difference in battery size. Supposedly the Extreme has a really good battery life. The Precision's battery life was pretty suck from day one. It didn't really get better. In fact, now it, it dies pretty quick uh, after just a few years of use. Uh, I think the battery is going to have to be replaced in my old laptop. Uh, the um, Lenovo came with a, a fingerprint reader. I believe that was stock. I didn't add it in, so I'm assuming it's stock. Uh, the, the Dell did not have a fingerprint reader, which I do like having a fingerprint reader. I think that's a nice feature to have for security when you're doing multi-factor authentication. Both have Intel wireless. Um, <coughs> this was interesting to me. The Lenovo actually weighed more than the Dell, more or less the same specifications, uh, but the Lenovo weighed 4.06 pounds, whereas the Dell weighed 3.92 pounds. The thing that surprised me is I really thought uh, on this Dell, it has a pretty big, you can see it uh, right there, pretty big slab of, of aluminum on the top and on the bottom. 
And I really thought that that would probably weigh quite a bit more than the material that the uh, X1 Extreme is made out of. Now, I don't know if this is carbon fiber or not. Uh, I'm guessing it's not, but I, I really don't know. I didn't look that up. Um, but the Lenovo is actually a little heavier. But it's also a little bigger. Its dimensions are a little larger. So the Lenovo X1 Extreme is 14.24 inches wide. The Dell is 14.1 inches wide. So let's look at that. What I'll do is I'll just put the Dell on top of the Lenovo and I'll scoot it all the way to one side. Okay, so, so if I do that, you can kind of see there's a little bit of difference in the dimensions there. So the Lenovo, although it's newer with basically the same spec, it is a larger laptop. Now, if I do the same thing from the front, you'll see the uh, Lenovo is quite a bit, uh, has quite a bit more depth than the Dell as well. So that's probably where your weight's coming in. Um, I, I can't imagine that that's helping it on weight. Uh, on both these laptops, uh, the underside where the fans are, now this precision is a loud laptop. One of the complaints on the, uh, the Lenovo X1 Extreme was that the fans could spin up, be very loud. Um, for people that are complaining about that, uh, the truth is that's that's what you're buying. It's a it's a it's a high-end laptop with a lot of horsepower, massive video graphics card which heats up really quick. It's going to have to spin those fans to keep it cool. That's just the way it is. So uh, if you don't want a loud laptop, go get a Chromebook or uh, a much lower end Core i5. Uh, get rid of the 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 upgraded four gigabyte video card and just go with onboard graphics. It'll be perfect for a worker. But if you want the extra horsepower, you're doing some video rendering, you want to uh, do any 3D modeling, anything like that, especially if you're a gamer, if you want to play uh, 3D video games on it, uh, it's going to run good. But it is going to be very hot when you run 3D things, and it's going to be very loud. So you're going to have to just get used to that if that's something you're not used to. Um, on my Dell, you can see I don't have a very, this is where all the uh, air uh, uh, comes out of the laptop. It breathes. I believe, yeah, it breathes in through here um, in front of the monitor, um, and then it will blow out underneath here, if I remember right. I may be getting that backwards, so don't quote me on that. But um, these vents, I mean, this is not a lot of airflow, and I've had the bottom off this laptop. I've replaced the uh, hard drive with a larger hard drive in it. Um, it's not a lot of airflow um, on this laptop, and, and I think that that's been a curse for this laptop getting pretty hot. Uh, and not being able to stay cool. Um, so if you're like me and you work from bed or you're working on the couch and you may sit a pillow under your lap, especially when it gets hot, uh, you say, oh, well, you know what? It's getting hot. I'm gonna put a pillow between my lap and, and the laptop. Well, you're just taking a pillow and you're sealing off all this ventilation. You're gonna burn your laptop up. So if you work with this on your lap for any length of time, it's gonna be uncomfortable. And the same exact thing is true of the Lenovo except they did a good job making lots of ventilation. Um, so there is a very wide strip for air to come in or go out, depending on which direction it goes <laughs> uh, in there. Um, so so it's, it should do a better job staying cool because of that. Uh, I don't know if the aluminum would dissipate the heat any better than whatever material they're using here, but they did use heat pipe technology for all their cooling on both laptops. So um, mainly just the airflow, the, the in and out to be able to do what it needs to do. And then I haven't looked at this one yet, so I'm going to look now. So yeah, it's got the same system on the top where the air comes in through here uh, and to keep the device cool. But again, if you sit this on your lap um, and you seal off those fans, it's going to get hot. Um, I would recommend if you're going to work uh, with this laptop at home, in bed, or, or um, on a couch or a lounger or something at your house, uh, get yourself one of those plastic uh, little stands for laptops. Some of them will have a fan built in. You can plug it into the USB ports, and that'll help uh, keep them cool and run better. I've got one that I use because I got tired of having my lap uh, turn red when I was wearing shorts with my laptop on my, on my lap. So, so overall, though, they're, they're pretty much the same spec, um, just one's newer than the other. Um, Performance-wise, uh, I haven't done enough really on the Lenovo still to say whether it's a tremendous increase in performance. I don't have any games running on it. I'm, I'm not doing anything that way. Um, but one thing I noticed was on the Lenovo, uh, it took a long time to start. It was kind of a surprise. I don't know why it takes so long to start up. So um, I'm going to do a little experiment here. And 
from what I recall, my Dell's pretty quick to start. Uh, but I haven't really put these side by side to see. So this is the first time you're seeing it as I am. And I'm curious to see which one's going to get to the Windows launch screen, uh, login screen first. So here we go. And they're both starting. Okay. So the Lenovo was faster than I recalled. So maybe that was before I'd patched it. Um, the first time, and uh, and I did when when I bought it. I'd read a lot of reviews. There was a lot of complaints about issues with this laptop. Uh, there were some blue screen errors, like I said, about the fans being noisy. Um, there was some battery life issues. There was various things. So there was a lot of firmware updates that were released after this laptop hit the market. I think it's been on the market probably five, four or five months, maybe. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but not not a huge amount of time. And so when I got the laptop, first thing I did was I ran all the updates, firmware, Windows updates, and everything else. Um, so it appears that it's actually booting in a pretty good time. Uh, so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, I did use it uh, one evening for probably about an hour, and the battery was still going pretty strong. I wasn't doing anything graphics intensive, just sitting on my couch working. And uh, so I was pretty impressed with battery life, and, and it should be good. It's a, it's a much bigger battery than what the Dell has. Um, if I was doing it over again, I think I'd still buy either the Extreme or uh, just an X1 uh, model of laptop, but I wanted the bigger screen. Uh, I do wish it was smaller. I wish that, that, you know, as you can see here side by side, you know, this is bezel. I mean, I don't need that bezel. I liked the almost edge-to-edge -edge Dell screen uh, compared to this. I, I just wish it was the same size as the Dell. Uh, in my previous video, I talked about the print screen print screen key. And it threw me off to no end. And I, I actually had someone comment in YouTube uh, about print screen keys been in a keyboard for going back to the 80s. And they're right. Uh, I was just thrown off because it's down here on the keyboard and it just wasn't clicking. Um, I use Snagit for all of my screen captures and video edit, or not video editing, but screen captures and documentation. And it's been a long time since I've used a print screen key. So I just blanked um, a bonehead move. But it's, I don't like where it's at. It's right here between the alt and the control key. And I'm used to having alt then control. So whenever I need to control and do hotkeys, I keep hitting the print screen key. It's very irritating to me. I could probably remap it. Uh, I may eventually. But I think if you're on Lenovo and you've been on them forever, it's going to come as no surprise. It appears that's kind of their standard way of doing things. Uh, I'll adapt and uh, get used to it. So you know, overall, they're, they're both good laptops. Um, I don't regret my purchase on the Lenovo. Um, I am a little disappointed in the price. Uh, the Lenovo was quite a bit more expensive than the Dell that I bought a few years ago, uh, even though they're pretty comparable um, on, on spec. So the Lenovo was, uh, my cost was $2,442.14. On the Dell when I bought it new, it was $2,189.58. Uh, these are technically rated as more of an entry-level CAD system or ultra-portable CAD system, and these are just a powerful workstation. So I really thought that the price should have been a little closer, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not uh, building these. I don't know every single detail about them. Uh, it works well enough for me. Uh, I'm not going to complain. It is overkill for probably 99.9% .9 of workers out there and business owners. Uh, if you're like me and you own a business, you're, you say to yourself, I want the best because I don't want to have question of whether my computer is slow because of this or that. I just want to know that I've got the fastest thing out there. And then if I have a problem, I know it's me. <laughs> it's a really silly way to look at things, but that's, that's the way I run my business, the way I like to run my, my uh, laptop and, and keep my technology that way. Um, when we make recommendations to customers, unless they have really high-end requirements, we typically re recommend eight gigs of RAM, a Core i5 processor, 128 or 256 gigabyte SSD, and that's across the board, desktops, laptops, and so on. Uh, the Core i7s are great processors, but if you're not doing really intensive things, it's, it's not really necessary. And to be honest, it's probably not necessary for me as well. I just wanted it. So that's all I've got. Just wanted to go over some basic findings on the two laptops. Uh, again, don't forget, this is a much older laptop, uh, this Dell Precision. It's not an apples to apples comparison. I'm just comparing my old laptop. that's a couple of years old uh, with the new laptop that I'm replacing it with. Pretty happy with it. Um, oh, one more thing I wanted to show you. So this is the uh, Lenovo PowerBrick. It's pretty small. Uh, and this is the uh, Dell PowerBrick, which isn't very big either. But I've got some, uh, some problems with the Dell PowerBrick, and I've had problems with Dell PowerBricks forever. 
you know, I use my laptop a lot. I'm constantly taking it in and out of the bag. Well, it's separating right here. Now, I can't tell you if the Lenovo will do that. I just got it, but we'll see if time uh, will tell if it's going to do the same thing. But uh, it is separating, and that's a cheap cable to replace. It's like six bucks, eight bucks on Amazon, because it's not the power brick. Power brick works fine, have no failures there, uh, so it's good. Uh, if you're looking at either of these laptops, one thing I do want to mention, uh, neither of these laptops uh, have an integrated Ethernet port. You'll have to have an adapter uh, to be able to see or to be able to connect to an Ethernet port and uh, uh, be on a network. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be using wireless. And what I'm going to tell you now, this was the only major complaint I had about the Lenovo, and that was, and I'm still fighting this month to figure it out. The wireless, we use Radius in our office with Network Policy Server, and we have had a real struggle getting it to accept that wireless network. It's very strange. I'm not sure what's going on yet. I'm going to have to keep working on it. But uh, it is not wanting to connect. I can try putting in my username and password, and it just doesn't want to do it. So I'm um, going to have to put some time into that, um, and we'll see what we can figure out. Anyway, I still feel good about the laptop. The, other, the wireless, we'll sort that out. I'm not really going to lose sleep over it. But if you have any questions or concerns or, or wanted to, to uh, see a little more about the laptop, I can always make another video. If you have questions, I can show you uh, other information, details about it. Uh, that's all I've got. My name is Brian Largent. This is, uh, 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 that's it. <laughs> so have a great rest of your week. Thanks.